Hi, this is ROC Boss. Today we're gonna talk about Changsha campaigns, the first Allied victory over Pacific War. The Republic of China has been in a full-scale confrontation with the Empire of Japan since 1937. With better training and equipment, the Imperial Japanese Army was able to take over major cities such as Beiping, Tianjin, Taiyuan, Shanghai, and Nanjing. In ROC's capital, Nanjing, a massacre was launched to force the Chinese into submission. After winning its first victory in the Battle of Taiyuanzhuang, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek knew China was incapable to defeat with one single battle. Under trading space for time strategy, the victory over Taiyuanzhuang was only to give the national government more time to move its capital from Nanjing to Wuhan and from Wuhan to Chongqing. Chiang Kai-shek's trading space for time strategy worked with three major victories won in the city of Changsha between 1939 and 1941. By the time the IJA was defeated third time in Changsha, the United States had declared war on Japan and began the Great Pacific War. Fighting Japan for four years alone, China finally got its allies. Let us examine the first Changsha campaign taken place in late 1939. On October 10th, China's two major cities, Guangzhou and Wuhan, had fallen into Japanese control. China lost all its coasts and was forced to move the capital again from Wuhan to Chongqing. However, the IJA 11th Army soon found out that it was unable to launch new large-scale offense against the National Revolutionary Army because it did not even have enough troops to guard the occupied China. The Second Sino-Japanese War became a stalemate after the Wuhan campaign. Instead of launching new military campaign, Konoi Fumimano, the Japanese Prime Minister, decided it was better for Japan to end China incident through politics. He openly demanded Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek to step down and encourage China to join Japanese new order for East Asia. Konoi's suggestion was definitely unacceptable for Chiang Kai-shek and his supporters. Still, Wang Jingwei, the deputy chairman of the ruling Kuomintang, took the invitation of Prime Minister Konoe and escaped to Hanoi, the French Indochina from Kunming. Wang was ready to establish a new pro-Japanese national government in Nanjing, the occupied capital of ROC. Or Kamuna Yasuji, the commander of IJA 11th Army, would encourage local troops from Sichuan and Guangxi province in Lower Yangzi to defect from the central government to join the pro-Japanese regime in Nanjing. Li Zhongwen, the leader of Guangxi Army, and Yang Sen, the leader of Sichuan Army, both rejected Okai Munai's offer. Okai Munai believed that the only way to help Wang Jingwei to build up his new Chinese army was through total annihilation of Chiang Kai-shek's Central Army. The Ninth War Area under General Chen Chen and Xie Yue became his next target to attack. Changsha was the headquarter of ROC's Ninth War Area, Hunan borders Hubei province to the north, Jiangxi province to the east, Guizhou and Sichuan province to the west, Guangdong and Guangxi province to the south. The Guangzhou Hankou Railway, Hunan Jiangxi Railway, Hunan Guangxi Railway, as well as Hunan Guizhou Railway made Changsha even more important as a traffic center. Oigan Munaya considered taking Changsha a final step to end the China incident since Chongqing, ROC's wartime capital, was just west to the city. Taking over Changsha was not the only reason for Okai Wenai to launch the first Changsha campaign. Because Hunan was so close to Chongqing, Chiang Kai-shek deployed seven army groups consisted of 20 corps and 47 divisions to the Ninth War area. Among those units, Chiang Kai-shek's elite central army, which Okai Wenai tries desperately to destroy. In a protracted war against Japan, it was not necessary for the NRA to hold any city to death against IJA. To win this war, it would be more important for ROC to keep its force in shape until the Allies' intervention. He ordered General Chen Chen, General Jie Ye, the commander of the Ninth War Area, to move his headquarters south to Hanyang to let the IJA take Changsha. General Xie Ye, Chen Chen deputy, urged Generalissimo to defend Changsha. General Xie Ye stressed that all contributions will be given to Generalissimo if he won. If he lost, he will execute himself. Chen changed his mind and gave General Xie Ye with his full support. Xie Yue was determined to defeat the IJA 11th Army with his furnace tactics. With 47 divisions in hand, he ordered only 32 to the front line, while the rest 15 divisions as reserve in the rear. Those 32 front line NRA divisions were ordered to avoid direct confrontation with the IJA, but to retreat into the mountainous region around the city of Changsha. 
Only when the IJA supply extended too long down from Yueyang of the northern Hunan and Changsha, they would launch attack against the rear of the Japanese advance. The general Xie Yue would seal his furnace by launching counterattack with his full force. Xie Yue knew his furnace tactics would work because he had a lot of more troops than the IJA. The 6th Division based in Yueyang was the most powerful division of the IJA 11th Army. It was consisted of two infantry brigades, 6 cavalry regiment, 6 field artillery regiment, 6 engineer regiment, and 6 transport regiment. From Yueyang, the 6th Division will move south with the accompany of the 13th IJA Division to Changsha. Along the Guangzhou Hankou Railway, the IJA 3rd Division in the west of the railway moved south from Lujiao of Hubei to cross Dongting Lake to take Yingtian. In the same time, the 33rd IJA Division would launch attack from Tongcheng of Hubei province against Mai Shi. Or Kaimanai would open up a second front in Jiangxi province to interrupt the defense of Changsha. The IJA 101 Division in Nanchang and IJA 106 Division in Jing'an would move west to take Gaoan and Huifu. General Xie Yue realized it full well that the Chinese troops were unable to resist the Japanese mechanized force. Civilians of Hunan were therefore mobilized to destroy all major highways and communication lines around Changsha. By destroying all the modernized highway networks, the IJA tanks would be completely useless in the battle. It would slow down the Japanese logistic gradually as well to create the perfect opportunity for General Xie Yue to seal his furnace. Meanwhile, all foods were carried up to the mountainous region to feed up the NRA soldiers fighting the mobile warfare against the intruding IJA. The first Changsha campaign began in northern Jiangxi front on September 14th when the IJA 101 and 106 divisions launched their attack westward. Luo Zhuoying, the commander of 9th War Area's forward command, ordered his 19th Army Group to defend Gaoan and Huifu. In Gaoan, the IJA 101 division were surrounded and attacked by the 32 Corps and 49 Corps. The 32 Corps was reorganized from Shanxi Army, while the 44th Corps was the Northeast Army, expelled by the Japanese Guangdong Army from Manchuria. However, both local forces have been highly centralized since the beginning of the Second Sino-Japanese War. They fought hard enough to stop the IJA-101 division from passing through Gaoan to move further west to the main battlefield over the guangzhou Hankou Railway. As for the IJA-106 division, it was interrupted by the 58th Corps and 60th Corps from Yunnan Army. Both 58th Corps and 60th Corps fought with General Xie Yue's furnace tactics well. They simply allow the IJA 106 division to pass through the Huifu and separate its troops to move to different directions. One moved northward to Huang Sa Chiao, the other one moved southward to Ganfang. In Huang Sa Chiao, they were attacked by General Wang Lingji's 30th Army Group, composited of the 72 Corps and 78th Corps of the Sichuan Army. The other contingent of IJA 106 division moved southward, were followed and attacked by the Yunnan Army against its rear. When they arrived at Ganfang, the 74th Corps of Chiang Kai-shek's Central Army moved northward from Shanggao to surround YJA 106 Division with their brothers from Yunnan. Unable to penetrate through the northern Jiangxi front, both the IJA 101 and 106 Divisions could not provide the support the 6th Division needed to annihilate the Central Army in Changsha. From Yueyang to Changsha, there were Xinchang River, Niluo River, Laodao River, and Liu River to the east of Guangzhou Hunan Railway. Together with the, the Mufu Mountains, General Xie Yue had enough strategic space to carry out their furnace tactics. Or Gan Bunai ordered the IJA 6th and 13th Divisions to move southward from Yueyang on September 18th. However, they encountered fierce resistance from General Guan Lingzhen's NRA 15th Army Group before they could even cross Qinchang River. General Guan Linghui was one of Chiang Kai-shek's best generals. Both the NRA 37 Corps and 52 Corps under General Guan were either the Central Army or highly centralized local forces. The 15th Army Group staunch delayed both IJA divisions from crossing the river for five days. On September 21, the IJA 33rd Division moved south from Tongcheng of Hubei to Mai Shi. General Yang Sen, 27th Army Group, immediately attacked the 33rd Division right from Mufu Mountains. The 27th Army Group's 20 Corps successfully cut off the rear of the 33rd Division to prevent them from retreating northward. The only option left for the IJA 33rd Division was to continue move southwards, Xinjiang. 
after joint force with the 13th Division's Naira Detachment from Guangzhou Hunan Railway, they will together attack Changsha. Like the IJA-106 Division in Northern Jiangxi, the IJA-13 Division was followed and attacked by the NRA-52 and 37th Corps on their way to Pingjiang. In the same time, the 79th Corps Army attacked the 33rd Division in Jiayi. When the 13th and 33rd Divisions met up at Pingjiang on September 30, both units were too exhausted to move further south. In the battlefield west of Guangzhou Hunan Railway, the IJA 3rd Division crossed Dongting Lake with the support of IJN's land forces. It was attacked by General Xue Yue's 4th Corps as soon as it landed at Yingtian. When the 3rd Division arrived at Sanjiechiao, it was again ambushed by the NRA 70th Corps. Both 4th Corps and 70th Corps used hit-and-run tactics. They attacked the Japanese and retreated into the mountainous region. Unable to locate and destroy either of the Chinese Corps, the IJA 3rd Division also stopped its movement. Meanwhile, the IJA 6th Division advanced south without facing any resistance. It crossed Milo River and occupied Fulinpu as well as Jinjing. It arrived at the north shore of the Liaodong Lake by the end of September. However, Okabuna Yasuji felt that the advance of the 6th Division, his best unit was too smooth. Soon he felt that the IJA 6th Division had walked right into General Xue Yue's pocket. On October 1st, Okabuna Yasuji issued a full retreat order to the 3rd, 6th, 13th, 33rd, 101th, and 106th Division to withdraw. This order was discovered by the NRA on October 5th, which Xue Yue to call for a full-scale counterattack. All IJA forces returned to where they came from on October 10th of 1939, which was the national day known as Double Ten Days of the Republic of China. Changsha became the first major city which the NRA successfully defended since the beginning of the Sino-Japanese War. It not only boosted the Chinese morale, but also prevented the 11th Army from launching any attack against Changsha for the next two years. This is the end of the first Changsha campaign. The second and third Changsha campaign will be explained in future videos. Do you like our content? If you like them, welcome to subscribe to our channel. And if you can, welcome to donate to our channel.